Hello, dear friends. Here we are, 40 nights with the Promise Consoler. And today is actually day or night 20th. And this is exactly halfway through of this journey. What are we doing here? We are studying, reading passages that for the first time on the earth are in English. Yes, because these were the ones that came through the medium Chico Xavier by the spirit author Humberto de Campos, or Brother X, and he gave it all to us in several different books. These passages that are unprecedented with Jesus, and that's why it's the Promise Consoler, because it's through the hands of the loving spirits we have the opportunity of learning where Jesus said himself, he could not tell. He couldn't have not explained yet because we wouldn't understand. We needed to grow mature. And it's like uh, math for children. They can learn a few things, but not exactly everything, right? So it takes time for us to increase the levels of difficulty. And here we are. Yes, it's a very high level. It's the ethics of the immortal spirit. As Mentor Joseph says to us, this is a course on spiritual ethics. Immortal. Everything we are learning, we can carry to immortality. It's not only for this life. It's for lives to come here on the earth or any planet, world, galaxy in this universe. These are universal teachings. So before we enter chapter 45 from the book, Lusa Sima, but this is also compiled in another book titled No Roteiro de Jesus, both by the Brazilian Spiritist Federation. Anyhow, in English, it's going to be here, read for the first time to you. And we're going to break it down in therapeutic exercises because, you know, it's not important to know alone. We need to feel them. And many people say, I know, I've read, I've read, I've read. And then what are we doing with it? Are we leading a life very different from those who haven't read? Because if our lives and their lives are very similar, uh, we haven't been feeling the scripture. Because when we feel the scripture, our lives are turned upside down. Oh, yeah. We still live normal lives in the sense of we have a house, we have to dress up, etc. But the goals and the attitude and the approach is completely different. If it's not different, we need to read it again. If we haven't read it, this is the first time. The title is The Scripture of the Gospel. But we have titled it, The Last Words of, the, of Jesus, The Heart of the Disciple. Okay? Just for us, for our therapeutic purposes. Let us say hi to the beautiful community since we are halfway through this beautiful journey. 40 nights with the Promise Consoler, with the guidance of the loving guides and spirits with us. We have here our friend, Andrea. How are you, Andrea? And Jussara, how are you, Jussara? And Leia Severo, how are you, my friend? And Valeria Benfica, good job, Valeria. You're in Brazil, at least now we're one hour apart. It's easier, right, than when we were three hours apart, but good job anyhow. Constance Franklin, how are you, warmer than us? Because Florida is warmer than when we are. It's freezing here in Chantilly, Virginia. Leia, we're very thankful for your presence, always supportive, always helpful. Thank you for helping us keep up with the messages also that have been coming uh, through Kardec Radio on Facebook. Hello, Erica and Danny, how are you? They're in Pennsylvania, right? Sunshine, California, Mamma Mia. How are you? Nevada City, Nevada City, right? Hello, Rita de Cassia in Atlanta. How are you? Ah, 
Wow, we're just there at the center, now we're here. It's always great to have you here. Ah, oh, Mrs. Gloria, what a an honor to have you here. We love you, we appreciate you for everything you do for our family, thank you. Hello, Carol Correa is here. Ah. <laughs> we just, we've just seen each other, right? Just seen each other, Carol did a fantastic job teaching the kids lessons of kindness at our center in Virginia. Thank you, Carrie Mark, for your beautiful presence in our lives. Solange! Andrea, you're going to travel to Brazil. Have a safe trip. Don't forget. Tour the Spirit Centers. <laughs> Put our names there <laughs> in the prayer book, right? <laughs> and you know, you observed, we have a friend here. Who, look who is here. This is Shane Martin. She's from Richmond, right, Shane? Yes. You want to tell a little bit about the Spirit Side of Richmond? Yes, friends. On uh, last year, the group has existed since about 2008, thanks to uh, the kind help and effort of Vanessa. And last year, we became a full-fledged Spiritist Society in Richmond, Virginia, proudly the second Spiritist Center in Virginia. And uh, we are uh, open. Um, monthly for uh, workshops so if you know anyone who is in our area and would like to know more about spiritism we have a Facebook page we have a website just be in touch with us and we are we'll be happy to um, help everyone and it's my pleasure and my honor to be here with Vanessa tonight and this beautiful lessons of the master Jesus yeah you see oh yes you know people often ask us you know, um, is spiritism growing in the United States? No doubt about it. And I tell you this, Kardec Radio also is throughout the world. And there are so many things going on. And did you see that Kardec Radio now is going to pay for two flight tickets, airline tickets? To Orlando, May 5th is going to be the U.S. Spiritist Symposium on Reincarnation. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Not only beautiful because it's aesthetic, beautiful, but because it's hard work. Put together, organized by the United States Spiritist Federation and sponsored by many organizations in the United States. It's a unique effort. I tell you, there are so many fantastic people who are going to be there responsibly. The speakers, since the first symposium, are so diligent, so serious, so committed. So, they are so studious that, you know, it, it's an opportunity for us to recharge, refresh, mingle with the community. This social encounter is so important. It's in two realms we're never alone and you see it's just growing it's expanding like the spiritist side of Richmond so if you are in the capital of Virginia Richmond is mm -hmm. the capital of the state of Virginia now we have a spiritist center there Shane is since Baltimore right Shane mm -hmm. when she used to be in Baltimore and then she moved here she's still connected she's a member of the spirit side of Virginia in Chantilly and there as well she is one of the greatest collaborators we have nowadays for the Spiritist magazine. And uh, Kardec Radio, in a way, because all the things that she's helping translate, and books as well. She helped also with the book uh, Good News, mm -hmm. that we had the whole series, and many other books that are coming along. So, here we have, you see, you're seeing it. But you wanna, you wanna win the flight? If you're in the United States, if you are in the United States, even if you are not resident, but you, if you pay your trip to the United States, we send you to Orlando. All you need to do is make a short clip. Short clip saying, saying what? Saying why you like Kardec Radio and most important, why reincarnation is the divine mechanism of God to express justice. 
How about it? Which is the theme of the workshop. Hello, Melissa and Rihanna. How are you? And here we have Gustavo. Gustavo is here. Look who is here, Gustavo. Hey, Gustavo. Long time no see. Yeah. You see, Gustavo, Maria, Marcia. Big hug. It's good to have friends. Ready? Just make your clip, send it to us. The most, cre the two most creative videos are gonna win the trips. You have a month to work on it, but don't wait too long. Just record it, send it to us, and you win the trip to Orlando. Hello, Adilson. Right? Share the news, cause these are really good news. And the scripture of the gospel, shall we? Let us prepare ourselves. Prepare to feel the scripture. When Jesus, just by saying his name, we start smiling. Even the way we say Jesus, we are forced, we have to open these muscles of the face. When Jesus recommended the preaching of the good news in various directions, the small apostolic college gathered around him in the humble res residence of Peter, when many questions reigned in the loving inquiry, Philip thoughtfully said, Master, if bad guys stop us, what will we do? Will we have uh, any recourse to punitive authority? Pause for a second, just to contextualize. Jesus was telling them about the importance of spreading the good news everywhere. This is important for you and I, okay? Important for you and for me. Why? Because Jesus is inviting all of us to do this. Share the good news. Don't be shy. Let it shine. Don't be shy, my friends. Because I remember when we started the Spiritist group in Baltimore. It started in my home. I was single. I didn't know any other Spiritists. I invited George Godinho, Ned, and his wife to come and help. They asked me, do you know any other spiritists? And I was like, I'm going to find them. And I thought, well, where there are Brazilians, there are spiritists. <laughs> it's, the, <laughs> it's the logic, right? So I started calling a list of Brazilians that I had at hand, calling. I didn't know them and saying, my name is Vanessa Celoni. On this day in October 1998, 1998, that's when we started it, we are going to do our first meeting. Was my intention to create a spirit descent? No. Confession. I was only 25 years old. I wanted to go back to Brazil after my research. But I said, you know, as long as I'm here, for a year or two, I want to have a nucleus of spiritual nourishment. So, that's how precisely, precisely it began. Godinho kindly was there. His intention, he never came to me demanding, let's make it a spirit center. No, he came. We said a prayer, read the gospel. And believe it or not, Three other people came. I'll never forget that day. Yes. And week after week, more people and more people in without internet. At that time, we didn't have a website. We didn't have these habits that we have of internet nowadays. Almost 20 years ago. It's going to turn 19 years this year. We started because we needed it. But we can't keep it only for ourselves. We need to do this 
moments together with people and open up. And people started coming in three months, we had more than 30 people. And then we found a place at the University of Maryland, and the story goes on. And then the Spirit of Virginia, the group Gustavo, Maria Marcia, who were in Richmond and asked us to be there to talk to friends in a specific organization. Little by little, opening up for other people, and then Shane came along many years ago, and then she kept on sustaining the torch until she committed to it. And now she is holding the flag so other people can see. People are drowning in their lives. They see the flag and just like <clears throat> the one who created the poem that now is the national anthem of the United States of America. Francis Scott Key, he was a lawyer. He was in a tall ship in Baltimore negotiating the release of an American friend who was taken hostage in a British tall ship. It was the final battle, 1814. And very likely they were going to lose the battle because Britain, the Great Britain army was much stronger. But when Francis Scott Key woke up and saw in the first hours of the dawn that the flag was still standing, the Star Spangled Banner. He wrote the poem. That's why the song goes by like this. Oh, say can you see by the dawn early nights? La da 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 da. La 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 la. So that's exactly the reason why. The flag was still there, standing, and he was so truly moved because that meant that they won, that they were still there, that they conquered their independence, and they sealed it in the very waters that now surround Baltimore City. While we're saying this, because when you hold a flag, in your home, in your nucleus, spiritus nucleus. Those who are waking up in the middle of their dawn, the dawn of their lives, the darkest hours of their suffering, but the end of their suffering, because dawn is the beginning of a new day. They see your flag, and for them, it means new hope, new beginning, independence, Liberation, that's why Jesus is telling us the preaching of the good news shall go through the whole world. And we cannot hold it back just for us. Don't be shy, my friend. Let it shine. That's why Philip asked, but master, what if people come after us? What are we going to do? And Jesus replied, if you are afraid of holding that flag of the Spirit's light, don't be. Our mission is to turn evil into kindness, shadow into light. Although such a transformation costs us sacrifice and time, the program cannot be any other. Do you want me to read it again? I will. Our mission is, and Jesus replied thoughtfully. Thoughtfully means he was putting his whole self into that. Our mission is to turn evil, ignorance, lack of knowledge, lack of experience into kindness shadow into light 
although such a transformation costs uh, sacrifice and time. Sacrifice and time. The program cannot be any other. And then, of course, Thomas, Philip and Thomas. But what if we are attacked by criminals? People are afraid nowadays, right? Being persecuted. And then the Christ. Now let's observe the Christ. When Umberto de Campos uses these different recourses to refer to Jesus, he has hidden lessons in them. The, conf the Christ confirmed it's the voice of the universal progress. Even so, our ministry is one of redemption. Always forgiving and loving. By persevering good, we will attain the final victory. Always forgiving and loving for you and I. An ultimate therapeutic question, friends. Are we always forgiving and loving? No, but Vanessa, I forgave that person, but I don't want to be friends with that person. So we didn't forgive. But, you know, how can I trust that person again? You haven't forgiven. When we forgive, we reset, you know, like a computer. When we forgive the computer for all the viruses that were taken up, we reset and we begin anew. We're not going to say, oh my gosh, is there any virus still there? Reset. It's rebooted. It's a new, new system. We're going to start over. I'm not a specialist in it, but you know what I mean, right? You know the words. You know what I mean. We're going to reformat the hard drive. Is that what it means? Yes. Take the picture of the moment when the person had an issue with you. Tear it up. Do it like this. Is this the picture? And we need to do it, friends to make sure we feel it. If this is the picture of the person who hurt you, who had a problem with you, we need to do this and delete. Don't keep it. Because if you keep it, we haven't forgiven. Okay? So always forgive. Now James the son of Alphaeus. Lord, if the Pharisees, lovers of the law, and there are many people like the Pharisees, they even love spiritism. That's what they think. But they create a lot of discord. So they don't really love it. There are people who say they are Christians. They love the scriptures. But they create a lot of discord. They don't love the scriptures. There are people in every religion, philosophy, who talk about law. They talk about law, the law of love. They love the law of love, but they create discord, so they don't love. So we don't want to be the Pharisees. But question remains, how much of a Pharisee do I have inside of me? How much? Am I still like that? But Vanessa, who is going to put order? Who is going to keep it pure? Neither you nor I, because we're not the Pharisees. You don't want to start a persecution movement like Saul of Tarsus. Don't. We've been there, done that in previous lives, in this life. We're going to keep focused. Eyes. Yeah. One, two, three. Eyes on him. You know, we children, we say, one, two, three, eyes on me. But this time is one, two, three, eyes on him. Eyes on him, and he's saying, focus on the ones who are suffering. Focus on the ones who are suffering. But Vanessa, somebody is writing a mediumistic book. That is not good, and people are being deceived, they say. 
focus on the ones who are suffering. People are adults. They have to, they have to be tested on their discernment to grow mature. We can't babysit them. We're not here policing anybody. Oh, but that person says this in the... Would you like that somebody blocks you because they think the way you're doing is not good? Don't do that to others. Because with the same sword that we use against others, we're giving opportunity for people to use against us. With the same measure that we judge others, we're going to be judged by others. But Vanessa, we need to protect spiritism. No, spiritism doesn't need a protection. No, we don't. The promised consoler has the, its inner security system because it's always focused on consoling the ones who are suffering. Those who think they are doing well, let them be in peace, like Jesus said the other day. For you and I, we focus on spreading the good news by loving, forgiving, being kind. But the Pharisees, James said, the lovers of the law question us what guidelines we will take. They are, you see, they are the custodians of sacred texts with which they justify the proud conduct they adopt. They are argumentative. They are said to be the heirs of the prophet. How, to, uh, how should we act if the new kingdom determines fraternity exempt from tyranny? It's precisely what we're talking about. After brief, and then Jesus said, he explained, now the Messiah of Nazareth, the Messiah, the one that was sent to take us out of this blindness. You see, in the way Umberto de Campos is mentioning Jesus, he's already telling us what this lesson is all about, to heal our blindness. Because when we think like the Pharisees, that we are the custodians of the Spiritist movement, of the Spiritist teachings. We need to close this door for this speaker. Close that door for that speaker. Don't talk to this person. Only talk to this and that. We're being like the Pharisees. And the price we're going to pay is going to be very, very hard. Because the Pharisees didn't know about this. We know. The Messiah said, yet, there, it is up to us to witness the new ideas. We will fulfill the law of Mo Moses with our respect. However, we will renew the sublime sense, just like the seed that unfolds in blessed fruits, justice, will be the root of our earthly work. However, only the spirit of sacrifice will guarantee the harvest. Why does Jesus repeat this sentence? Spirit, the expression, spirit of sacrifice. He says it's the only assurance of the harvest. Adilson is sharing with us that his brother said once when we, they were going through a struggle in their center, Jesus and Spiritism do not need to be defended by you, Adilson or anybody else, but exemplified through your actions, words, and thoughts. Thank you, Adilson. And that's exactly how it is. Look at Jesus. He's loving and helping. He's not stopping to, let's create an army. Let's police it. We're going to need security, extra security. Don't talk to this person. Don't talk to that person. This person is writing weird books. That person is doing 
crazy rituals, mediumistic practices. Let's all go there. We've done it previous lives. We cannot repeat the mistakes. We're not the crusaders. We're not in the Inquisition any longer. We were there. It wasn't fun. We're done. It hurts. We don't need to go there again. Tonight, when we were at the Spirit Side of Virginia, I've heard about a PhD who wrote about the research that is going on regarding reincarnation. And she wrote a book titled Repetition that I, I am yet to read. But I've got to know from a former priest who is at our center, his name is Ken, and he said, Vanessa, I was given this book and I'm reading and I was very glad that he told me about it because he says she focuses on how we tend to repeat the mistakes of previous lives. And this is a PhD research in the book she published. I'm yet to read and tell you more about it. But we're, we're always in that tendency to repeat like the book messengers. We tend to repeat what we've done in previous lives. Do you want to repeat the same mistake? Because as the more we repeat the lesson, the more ashamed we feel that we haven't yet grasped the core of the spirit of sacrifice. Sacrifice what? Sleep. Sacrifice entertainment. Sacrificing indulgences of the senses. In a book titled Mediunidade Sintonia by Emmanuel, Mediumship and Attunement One Day in English, through Chico Xavier he says, we need to be very watchful about our central desire, examine our desire, because through focusing on the pleasure of the senses of the body like the hedonistic movement of the soul we attract company that like the same things so jesus said the spirit of sacrifice is the only assurance like mentor joseph was telling us tonight at the spirit side of virginia if you come and say, I want to have, I want to harvest lavender, but I am daily planting marijuana, I can't complain that at the end of the month I'm going to be visited by those who like marijuana instead of the bees that like lavender. That's precisely what it is. So I can't complain. What is our central desire? Andrea Lewis repeats that lesson for us in the book Action and Reaction. And tonight, Jesus confirms the spirit of sacrifice, sacrifice of those old conditionings. You know, I want to change my life, but don't ask me to change my habits. My life's never going to change. After a brief pause, so let us breathe in. Out, in and out. Thaddeus, who had been impressed with the answer that Jesus gave to James, he then added with a question. What if the casuists confuse us? Jesus replied, we'll pray the divine inspiration for our human expression. Hmm. Human expression. That we sublimate ourselves. But what will happen if our understanding remains obscure to the point that we cannot register Relief from above, insisted the apostle. Then Jesus said, smiling, nonverbal lesson. 
He's not tired of the questions. Sometimes people ask us questions and another question, another question, and we're like, isn't that enough? And Jesus is teaching us, let people ask. Genuinely, they want to know. But he, he said it with a smile. Let us do the therapeutic question. Zero to ten. How often do you say things smiling with kindness? Because there are different smiles. Sarcastic smiles. Loving smiles. Kind smiles. Where are you, my friend? How often? Zero percent, hundred percent. You say things smiling to people. Smiling, making them feel comfortable, making them feel comforted. Jesus said smiling. Then, then, it will be necessary to purify the vessel of the heart, hoping for clarity from above. So, let us put a pause. Thaddeus was asking, what if we ask for... For God to bring relief and we don't find it and Jesus is saying so we need to purify the vessel of the heart because God never goes silent no no if our connection is not working what is the where is the issue at God's end or at my end when Mother Teresa says, Oh, God went silent on me. I truly believe she meant it figuratively. Because truly, we know God never goes silent. But on our end, maybe our cable is not plugged in. And that's why the connection is not happening. Master, shall we call individuals indistinctly in our preaching? Asked Andrew. The Savior replied, We will help all without demands. Jesus said that with a particular significant inflection in his voice. We will help, help all without demands. What does that mean? We don't select those who are going to listen to this. Oh, but I cannot talk about it because that person doesn't believe in this. I remember when, remember when I told you that uh, my first friend in the United States a Muslim Moroccan scientist, she came to me, and before I brought her to the Spiritist group of Baltimore, I visited her community, and I wanted to read the Koran. That was the advice by the mentors. But I didn't do this for an exchange. I did it because in the book, On the Way to the Light, Emmanuel says clearly that Jesus in the name of God has sent masters and prophets to every part of the world to bring this message. So the message that is there belongs to the message of Christ. Is the message of God. If I despise it, I am despising the Christ consciousness. Right? So I need to learn. I shouldn't be focused on people learning what I know, but I should go and identify the universality in everyone's. Friends, the time has come. If we are not religious, religiously competent, 
We know descriptions, but we're not feeling them. And then Simon Peter, always, his brother Andrew asked a question. Now his turn. Lord, and he said it cautiously, we have goodwill, but we are also weak sinners. Thank you, Simon Peter, because he knows. He is the voice of how we feel oftentimes. We still have our shortcomings. What if we fall on the road? What if often I hear the suggestions of evil and then we wake up in the webs of remorse? What do we do? Give up? What do you do? Peter said the divine friend. You see how Umberto de Campos, my friends, he is teaching us beyond the words he is saying now, the divine friend, the same spirit, but that feature of the friendship, the friend that is never going to let go of us. Peter, get up and move on. This is the medicine. You made a mistake, get up, move on. That's the medicine. I remember when George Godinho Neri, he said to me, Vanessa, remember when Jesus was in his last day, the passion, carrying the cross, he fell a few times. Do you remember what happened? And I said, please enlighten me because so much happened, I don't know exactly what you're talking about. He said, remember when a friend, anonymous, came and offered to carry the cross for him? Why do you think the governor of the planet, the master of all masters, fell? Number one. Question number two. Why did he allow himself to be helped? Humility. There he was teaching us the ultimate lesson. If I fail, if I am humble enough, I'm going to stand up and begin anew. Jesus taught us that lesson in the flesh, literally in the flesh, right? Yes, Enilda, welcome, A smile, be happy, influence others with your happiness, exactly. Patricia, how are you? Luciana Tuani, Elisete, hello friends, hello. It's good to be together, but be ready. There's more. This is not enough. Are you feeling it? You made a mistake. Don't stop. But be funny. People are not going to trust me. You need to trust yourself first. You know, many people who go to jail, when they leave, they're like, oh, but people are not going to trust me, me any longer. Begin with yourself. Do you trust in you? Because if you do, people will regain their trust. It's a conquest. And at the end of the day, it's between you and God. Always. Right? Yeah. So now, then Peter, the fisherman, insisted, but what if our fall is so disastrous that it will not be possible to restart it immediately? Thank you, Simon Peter, for your question. <laughs> we could compose a song because it's the ultimate question, right, Shane? Tsh. From now to the time we become pure spirits, do you think we're not going to fall? We will. Disastrously, we hope not, but what if we do? We don't know ourselves yet that well. What did Jesus answer? We want to know the answer. We want to know the answer. We, says Jesus, we will 
we arrange our disjoint arms. We will mend our hearts in shambles and praise the Father for the fruitful lessons we have gathered by moving on. Pause. Feeling. What are you feeling now? Feel it. I'm going to read it again. What if you make a huge mistake? What do we do? He says, rearrange. And he says, we will. Not you. He doesn't say you like a command. He's so loving. And he says, we will rearrange our disjointed arms. We will mend our hearts in shambles. And we'll praise the Father for the fruitful lessons we have gathered. And then move on. He's saying, fix the instruments of your journey, our arms. Work with the feel of your journey, your heart. Count, hold the hand of God. Praise the Father. Saying thank you. And go. And go. Why is Jesus saying we? Because he was not born a pure spirit. We know in this universe that nobody was born ready. We were born with the potential to be developed. So that's why he's saying we. Because he did that journey before he incarnated on the earth. Not on the earth. Jesus' journey of evolution didn't happen on the earth. But it happened in this universe. And he said we. Meaning I know what you're talking about Peter. Look where I am. And I'm telling you. When that happens, we put ourselves together, count on God, and move on. Right? Yes. Hello, Julija. How are you? Now, John, with his clear eyes, he asks, What if the demons attack us? So many spirits are afraid of bad spirits. Right? <laughs> the demons right Shane it's like people are afraid of the spirits there are people who are afraid of doing the good works because they know the bad spirits may be after us and they're like oh my gosh so I prefer not to get too involved there are some people like this right and John he knows it like what if they attack us when we are sharing the good news? Jesus replies, We will attract them to the glory of peaceful labor. What? What? We will attract them to the glory of peaceful labor? So we're not going to say, Please, go to the light? No. We're not going to expel them, do a ritual. I don't know. Don't, don't ask me because I don't know what ritual would be. But some people, like, push them away. Can they be sent to another planet? To another galaxy? To the spiritual hospital? What if they need to be with us to learn the lesson of peaceful labor? Read Andre Louis' books, the 16 series. We're going to learn that no good spirit comes and expel obsessors. They work with them. They allow them to be around. 
No, we don't expel them, dear children of God. <laughs> and Andrea is so funny. She's saying, if they attack me, they will have a very good surprise. Kardec every day. <laughs> Exactly, Nilda. We need each other to do this learning. It is great, right, Patricia and Rihanna? We all feel it. It's about time, friends. We need it. 20 days. The promised consoler, he's really consoling us. No doubt about it, right, Carol Correa and Mark Smith? Now, James has a question. The son of Zebedee the brother of John. But what if they hate us and they persecute us? They will be supported by us in the refuge of prayer. So we need to pray more. Huh? Uh-huh. No, sunshine will do the mediumistic works for the disobsession. But you know, that's a beautiful question, Sunshine. What about the rescue work, though? The rescue work is not to expel them. It's to educate them. That's why we call the ones who talk with the discarnate spirits through the medium, spirit counselors. It's like a psychotherapist. Mm -hmm. Or the instruments of that psychotherapy. We have a very short book that we translated many years ago, which is published by Divaldo Franco's publisher. It was by Uncle Nielsen, who worked with Divaldo for decades as the spirit counselor of all the entities who came through. We work with them. Sometimes there are entities who will come many sessions, sometimes four years. Like the, the spirit who persecuted Divaldo Franco for 30 years. The Iron Mask. 30 years, Divaldo doing all that work. Sacrifice, traveling, adopting children, etc. And this spirit would create embarrassments for Divaldo from right to left. It's in a book that is yet to be translated, but this is a, a very uh, public story. It's not a secret. 30 years, and Divaldo persisted, and this spirit was an enemy of the past. And he didn't believe Divaldo was changing, in spite of everything Divaldo was doing. 30 years. What happened to change? Day by day, he was seeing Devaldo doing all those works. One day, they didn't have, for the time being, they didn't have any um, vacancy f for adopting other children, other babies. But one night, a woman knocks at the doors of the mansion of the way the foundation created by Devaldo Franco. She knocks at the door. She has a baby on her arms. She looks at Devaldo and says, can you please keep my daughter? He, they didn't have financial resources or space but how you're gonna turn down the Christ consciousness tells us never to turn down anyone. So he said, yes, we will. And then he looked at the child. The child was so dirty, ugly. She had so she was eaten up by the, the little bugs, a lot of, you know, bumps, and it was difficult. And Divaldo says, yes, we're going to accept her. 
And that's when he sees right next to the woman and the baby. The very spirit of the Iron Mask who was persecuting him for 30 years. He looks at this spirit and this spirit asks with a tone of sarcasm. Do you love this baby? Divaldo very sincerely said, not yet, but I will. He was so sincere, so willing to help, the spirit started crying and said, now Divaldo, I see you are a changed man. You know, who this baby is, my mother, in my last reincarnation. If you are going to take care of my mother, I will no longer persecute you, because now I see you have changed. The people that come asking for your help have something to do with you. If you turn them down, you won't be happy. But Vanessa, there's no but. It's about the spirit, the true spirit of love. Right? Yes. That's the lesson for us, and that's exactly what Jesus is telling us. Right here and now. He's saying, they will be supported in, our ref, in, a, in the refugee of our prayer. Friends, that's the lesson for us. So then, what if, says another man, what if those powerful and intelligent enemies destroy us? And Jesus said quietly, that's interesting. Quietly. Visualize Jesus saying it quietly. The spirit is immortal. And righteousness is rooted everywhere. Meaning, the body perishes, but we keep on living. And those who commit that crime will be held accountable. We shouldn't be afraid of spreading any good news because somebody's going to imprison us, kill us, persecute us. Let it be. We're just listening to these messages, reading, due to the sacrifice of many lives. Not one or two or three, but many. Many, many lives. <clears throat> then Levi, a practical man uh, used to statistics, wisely observed. What did he say? We want to know. Maybe it's our ultimate question. Lord, the Pharisee reads the Torah basing himself on his instructions. The Sadducee possesses precious scrolls to which he resorts in the propaganda of the principles he embraces. The Gentile, sustaining their schools, has thousands of scrolls, shelving the thoughts and convictions of the Greek and the Persian philosophers, Egyptians and Romans. And what about us? What documents will we use? What materials will we mobilize to teach in the name of the wise and merciful Father? The master meditated at length and said, Now, before the answer, observe the body language, the nonverbal lesson that Umberto de Campos reveals to us. He thought meditated at length. Why? He didn't know the answer. He knew. 
But first he needed everybody to calm down the emotions because this is a very, very key question that can either divide us from one another or unite us. There are people who think once the spiritists have these books, these books divide us from the world. Who doesn't read them? No. That's why at Kardec Radio, from day one, six years ago, we were asked to bring everyone in this world who talks about the same things, who researches about the same things in spite of the fact that they are not called themselves spiritists. Because these books do not create a wall between others and us. It's the opposite. It creates bonds of fraternity between us and everybody else. Okay? If we are using these books to divide and create a wall, we're no different from any other politician who is trying to create walls to divide some from others. At the end of the day, we're doing even worse because these books are about love. Whereas the bricks, not necessarily they're about love. This book does not distance myself from other people. It's quite the contrary. It tells me, embrace everybody. Find the commonalities, find the common grounds, talk to them, be one. By the way, our beautiful sunshine asked, Kardec Radio, right here uh, in our Facebook page, when people talk about uh, we're all one, if they really mean, that maybe they don't mean that we are connected, if they mean the pantheistic meaning, we don't agree because uh, we're not pieces of God. We're creations of God, but we're not God in the sense we're not a part of God like God needs me to be God. No, but I need God to be me. Okay, God doesn't need me to be God, but I need God to be myself. Okay, Sunshine, thank you for your question. Thank you, Gustavo. Thank you, Enilda. Okay? Thank you, Rihanna and Rita de Cássia and Julija and so. But we're not done. We're almost done. So what does Jesus say? Da -na -na -na. Almost done. Two, three paragraphs. What do we do? What materials do we have? The Spirit's Book by Kardec? Is that what it is? Mm-mm-mm. I don't think he said that. We will use the word when necessary. Knowing, however, that the degraded word establishes the domain of disturbances and darkness. Watch out for what we say. We, we you, will use the characters written in the extension of the kingdom of heaven. However, we will not forget that the world's plazas display numerous scribes in long tunics whose dark thoughts strengthen the empire of misunderstanding and shadows. We will therefore use all human resources in the apostolate, knowing, however, that the precious material of the good news resides in ourselves. Our neighbors will consult the message of the Father in our own life through our acts and words, resolutions and attitudes. Lowering the right hand, he continued. The divine scripture of the good news or the gospel is the very heart of the disciple. The twelve companions looked at each other in amazement 
and silence fell amongst them, while the crystalline waters, not far off, reflected the immense blue sky as they fell to the afternoon breeze that announced the first visions of the night. The divine scripture is in your heart, in my heart, in Shane's heart, everyone's heart. These books, thank you, Jesus, don't come to separate us. That's why Kardec Radio here is the Spiritist Radio. Why? Because it's universal. It talks to the whole world. It doesn't keep us separated from the world. We find the commonalities. We are literally aware that we're together in one family. And if I see a Muslim, a Jewish person, somebody who doesn't believe in God at all, an atheist, a Catholic, any Protestant, an evangelical person, a Buddhist, if I feel myself different, I'm in trouble. My heart does not feel the scriptures yet. If the scriptures are not there yet, I won't be able to fulfill the call of collaboration with Jesus in the name of God. Right, my friends? So that's why we're here. The scripture is in your heart. How are you feeling? Joyful? Yes. Happy? Shame? Happy? Grateful? Right, Rudy. Gracias. Yes, we're feeling very grateful. And when we're feeling grateful, we rejoice with God, saying, thank you, God, for these beautiful moments of realization, of learning, and most of all, liberation. Ignorance is less today than yesterday. Thank you, my friends. Thank you, and let us give a big hug on our dear Shane. Good night, everyone. Thank you, Shane, for helping us. Thank you, friends. Tomorrow we come back with more from the book Lusa Sima, as said in our post in Kardec Radio, in our Facebook. Jesus is passing by, Caracol Ray is reminding us. Jesus is passing by, and when he comes, everything is fine. Sadness is gone, and happiness arrives. And when he comes, everything is fine. Right. Sadness is gone and happiness arrives. Jesus is passing by. Bye-bye.